Welcome back to the channel everybody, it's Taken Grace here with another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial video. This video has been highly requested by a couple people actually, and it's a follow up to the uh, Inventory UI series uh, that I did here on YouTube. If you guys are curious, you can check it out right there after the video. Uh, basically we created an inventory system from scratch and all the UI that would go with it, including an inventory page, etc, etc. But one thing I did leave out from that series is how to take your items into the next level, because after you uh, start a new level, all your items disappear. So uh, in this video today, I will show you guys how to do that working with the game instance and uh, keeping all of your items for the next level. So before we get started, I want to ask you guys, do you like ads? Because I'm pretty sure nobody likes ads. Because I know I don't, and I'm constantly trying to skip through the ads to get to the good part. Lucky for you, I'm giving away three months of YouTube Premium, free. All you gotta do is like the video, subscribe to the channel for Unreal Engine tutorials just like this one, and we'll become better game devs together. And lastly, make sure you leave a comment down below, let me know what kind of games you guys are working on in Unreal Engine, and uh, what your dream game would be. Or if you're even working on the dream game, let me know, love to hear about it. So make sure you keep an eye on the channel, I'll post who wins. Alright, let's get started in the video! We are here in an inventory world. Throwback to Pokemon. But yeah, anyways, we are here in our inventory world. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is the basically the last part uh, that I left you guys at in this video. It would have been the lock and chest stuff that we did where we uh, now we have an inventory in our chest and we can spawn items from our inventory after we have the right key. So anyways, that's where we left off uh, in the series. If you guys haven't done the series yet, that's fine. Um, you guys can just use this as a base uh, just to learn how to do it inside your game. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to create a game instance. So it's really important to understand what a game instance um, is and does. So the game instance is one of the first things that is initialized in Unreal Engine when you start runtime, and it's going to persist for the entire game. So we're going to use the game instance uh, to help move data from one level to the other. First off, what we're going to do, we're going to go into, oh, let's put it into I have game mode or something here, don't I? No, I don't. I knew it existed. Oh, it's right there. Ah, me. Damn it. Game mode. Uh, so here's our third person game mode. We are going to right click and make a new blueprint class. And we're going to search for a game instance class. So it's going to be this guy right here. And we're going to hit select. And we'll just call this game instance class. God damn spaces. I wish Unreal would just auto remove the spaces. Is there a plugin for that? Because I would buy that. Because <laughs> I do that all the time. We are, uh, so, okay, we need to set this game instance. But funny enough, in our game mode, there's nowhere to actually set the game instance. You'll see here, there's literally nothing that says game instance or even references game instance. So we need to actually do this inside our project settings. And all you need to do here is uh, just type in instance. And you'll see game instance. And this is the C++ one. So we're going to do game instance class. All right, so once that's done, we're gonna close this. All right, so now that our game instance has been made, uh, we're gonna make uh, basically a blueprint to switch levels here. So uh, we will do something like this. Need to go, I can't see because my camera's in the way. There we go. Uh, let's go to maps and then we will make a new blueprint class type actor and we'll just call this BP, BP level switcher. Okay, open that guy up. Uh, this will just be super basic, just so we can do something. All right, so let's add a component. It's gonna be a box collision. We'll just call this trigger zone. And then box extent, I'll do like two, no, sorry, not 200, no, not 200 there, 50, that, that's even too big. All right, we'll do it uh, 20 by 200 by 200. So we'll have a nice little trigger box there. To load our level, uh, we're going to offset the Z location by 200, just so it's like flat on the ground. And uh, we'll hit compile. Let's just add a static mesh. Just Let's make it like the old school Spyro uh, games here. So we'll just say static mesh and we'll select, is there arc? Is there an arc of some variety? We'll just make it a door. There we go. And we'll just uh, do this here. We can probably shrink the trigger, bo bo trigger zone box now. Let's do 100 by... Fitty. Sure. Sure. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's uh, the static meshes. Let's just not do that. There we go. All right. So there we go. We got a trigger zone and a doorway there. All right. So that's all done here. Let's go into our event graph. All right. So in our event graph for the level switcher, we are going to get rid of all three of these. We don't need those. We're going to right click on our trigger zone. We're going to add an event on component to begin overlap. Uh, we're going to cast to our BP player. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to take our player, we're gonna need to get our inventory uh, component out of our uh, player character so that we can grab our inventory component. And then we need to set that those values 
inside our game instance so that we can take it to the next level. So we're going to just have a hit a pause here and we're going to open up our game instance that we made. All right, so it's in game modes. There we go. Uh, game instance here. So we're inside the blueprint. There's usually nothing in here, uh, gen generally speaking, but we're going to make a couple of things here. Uh, so let's go to variables. Let's make a inventory content. And this is going to be... Uh, in this specific project, if you're following my thing, it'll be the ace, uh, S underscore uh, item. Uh, it's going to be S item slot, if you were following along. And if we hit compile, um, we'll notice it has an item ID and a quantity, which is the basically the, the driving component of the inventory component. So however you have your game, whether that's you have it built in an array, which I assume it is, uh, basically this should be whatever your arrays are made of. Um, so once again, I'll just quickly show my inventory here just so that you guys can get an idea So this is inside my inventory here uh, The add to inventory function has pretty much everything in it that we need uh, But everything that drives it is literally the item ID and the quantity which I put into a struct uh, So then I've made the struct an array and then now every single um, Item in my inventory is stored in this content uh, as as uh, as a slot struck, which is item ID quantity. So however that works in your game, of course, I don't know what your game is if you're watching this uh, or what you've done. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. That's that's the type of uh, variable that this needs to be. Okay, so we're going to hit S item slot. We're going to convert that to a array so that we can hold multiple things in there. Okay, we're going to hit compile. And um, we'll come back to our game instance in a moment. Let's just go back to our level switcher. All right, so in here, uh, after we have casted to our player uh, and the cast is successful, we want to drag it here and we want to cast to our game instance class, the one we made. Okay, that looks super wrong. That's not the one, cast to game instance. Okay, there's two classes. This is like the class of game instance, and this is the one we made here, the one with no spaces in it. There we go. All right, so from object, we're gonna drag out of there and we're gonna get game instance. Hit compile, that looks correct. Okay, uh, so you're probably cringing a little bit because we're uh, casting a bunch, um, but uh, just keep in mind that when we change levels, it is gonna sever these dependencies, so we don't have to worry too much about it. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do here we're going to come out of game uh, instance class and we're going to set inventory content. Okay, and we'll drag in here. So now we need to grab from our player. This is why we cast it because we need the we needed the um, the reference to it. Um, and we're going to get our inventory components or our inventory here. We're going to drag it there. We're going to get content because that'll be all the content that's in our inventory. And we're going to drag this in here. Okay. So if this doesn't match, just make sure that uh, you just roll over this, like whatever, you know, whatever the array is in your inventory that's holding all of your actual items. Uh, just roll over it, see what it is, array of S item inventory slot, and then you just go change that in your game instance. All right. So basically, before we load the next level, we want to make sure that all of our things that we want to transfer to the next level have been sent to the game instance. Okay, so uh, just for the demonstration purposes, this is all we're doing is we're just sending our inventory over. So then we're going to drag out of here and we're going to load level. Uh, that's level streaming. We don't want that one. Uh, load, where is it? Open level by name. That's the one. Okay. Uh, we are then going to convert this to, or promote this to a variable and we'll make this instance editable and uh, compile. And we, yeah, we'll just call it level name or else let's make level to load just so it's easy. Okay. Hit compile. Uh, this is all done now, and all, all you need to do is uh, back in our game here. We just need to put our level switcher in our game. Just like that. We can add like a text. Gonna take me to Narnia. Narnia. There we go. All right, so our Narnia uh, gateway is open there, so we're gonna hit save. So, but before we go into Narnia, we need a way to retrieve the data from the game instance once we actually load the level. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go into our player character. Beep, beep, player character. Brr. All right, let's uh, go off of event, event uh, 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 uh. let's go off of event begin play. Uh, right after player defaults here, or right at the end of begin play here, uh, we're gonna do two things. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the game instance. Okay, so we're just creating a quick reference to that. Uh, then we're going to cast to game instance class, which is the obviously the one we made. Okay, so now we're going to drag out of here and we're going to get inventory content. Okay, and then we're going to drag out of our uh, inventory slot here and we're going to set content. 
Okay, so right after here, I'll leave a bit of space in here just because we're going to add something else in here. Okay, uh, and then one check we need to add because if we actually uh, run this right now, we're going to get an error. And that's because in our first level, when we don't have any content, it's going to run this and set the content. It's going to be like, hang on, this doesn't exist, right? So, uh, so we don't want that. We want to check and see is valid index. And that'll check if index zero has anything in it. And if it doesn't, then it's going to not run this because we're going to run out of the true branch. Okay, so if it is valid, we are going to set our content. If it's not, it's not going to do anything. All right. So with that in mind, we should, uh, that should work. Do I have another level to load? I just realized I might not have another level to load in this game. I don't. So I'm just going to quickly make a new level. Let's call it, or Nar we'll call it Narnia. Narnia. All right, I loaded a, all right, I made a new level. Nothing fancy here. Uh, just, <laughs> just just explain that we, uh, just to basically showcase our thing. Uh, I had to add lights and everything as it was a totally black new level. But if you guys want to learn how to make a day-night cycle with uh, time and everything from the ground up, and you can also turn on and off practical lights automatically when it's day or night, uh, you guys can check out the video card in the corner there after this video. Uh, and let's uh, just load the le other level here so we can test this out. All right, here we are. We're going to test it out now. We'll hit play. We'll pick up a couple of items here. And de -de -de, there they are in our inventory. Super cool. And then we're going to go to Narnia. And that's not Narnia. It's because we didn't tell it to load Narnia. This guy. Here we go. Level to load. Narnia. Please. And <laughs> Kudasai. Narnia. Kudasai. Narnia. Ik. What the f is this? This ain't Narnia. But we got all of our items. That's fine. Uh, so there you guys go. You know how to uh, send your items to the next level and then take everything with you. Um, I did do some uh, uh, talking to some people in the uh, epic uh, forum there. Um, so generally when you're casting to classes, it's fine. Um, I would recommend using structs uh, if you're going to be sending a lot of data over to the game instance to send to your next level. Uh, but honestly, yeah, the game instance is really good. Uh, I recommend definitely using that, especially if you have multiple levels. Um... Depends on your game. If you're making like a single player game, like XP, like putting your XP stuff in there might not be a bad idea. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm sure someone in the comments will say, no, it's a bad idea because XYZ. That's fine. I want to learn some stuff just like all you guys. So uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you guys learned something and uh, if you guys have any uh, suggestions for content just like this one here. So I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed the video and uh, please like and subscribe to the video and I will see you guys later. Peace.